Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a simple uh, centroid problem and this is going to be solving for the centroid of a composite shape. Uh, this is our first video talking about it and it's a pretty simple topic uh, so I won't hold on to you guys for too long um, but I'm just going to go over some of the brief points and definitions for how to solve these problems and understand them uh, and then we're going to get into solving this problem. But let's read the problem first. Uh, let's locate the centroid x bar y bar of the member's cross-sectional area. So we have a composite shape here with our x, y axis uh, as a reference uh, for where the shape is located. And we can see there's a couple of different shapes that we can quickly identify. We have a circle, which is actually representing a hole in this composite shape. On this side, we would have a quarter circle. Uh, right here, we would have that rectangular shape. And then at the end, we have this triangular shape. So before we hop into this problem, we need to understand a couple definitions. Uh, I'm gonna run through these really quickly, so uh, bear with me. But uh, here are a couple of the terms I just wanted to quickly go over and the formula that we're gonna be using today. So center of gravity. Center of gravity is where the total weight of the system acts. Now, when I say weight, typically we tend to get weight and mass confused. So I wanted to just clear that up quickly. Uh, so weight can be considered as force of gravity. And weight is actually defined as considering how the force of gravity acts on a mass. So what's a mass? A mass is the amount of matter in a system. And the way I wanted to explain this was pretty much just comparing uh, an object, right? Let's say we had a one kilogram mass on Earth versus a one kilogram mass on the moon. So obviously the mass on Earth and the mass on the moon will be the same, one kilogram. But if we're looking at the force of gravity, we know that uh, gravity on the moon is different from gravity on Earth. On Earth, it would be 9.81 meters per second squared. And on the moon, it's approximately 1.62 meters per second squared. So looking at their weight or their force of gravity, the force of gravity on Earth would be stronger than the force of gravity on the moon. This leads us into our next point where we're talking about the center of mass, which is where the total mass of the system acts, all right? And then the, com uh, the composite body is what we already talked about before. It's just a combination of simple shapes, uh, that create a system that we can solve a centroid for. And the cool thing about composite bodies is that we don't need to integrate using this formula because we have a finite number of shapes that we're working with. So here's the format that I'm talking about. Uh, just referencing this example up top, we've already seen what a composite uh, system looks like, but here's another one. We have a rectangular shape, rectangular shape, triangular shape, and a circular hole comprising this entire system, All right? So we have X bar, is equal to the summation of x tilde times the weight, okay? Over the summation of the entire weight of the system. So let's explain briefly what each of these mean, but in the formula and in the problem, uh, I'm gonna explain it in more detail. But pretty much x bar, y bar are going to be the coordinates for center of gravity of the entire system, right? And then x tilde, y tilde are gonna be the coordinates for center of gravity for each simple shape of the composite. So each individual shape has its own center of gravity as we know, and we can solve for the uh, y tilde and then x tilde respectively for each shape. Uh, and then obviously summation of weight is gonna be the sum of all weight and it's gonna be interchangeable with area as well as we'll see in the problem below. Uh, that's simply because we assume that when density is uniform, the center of gravity is also going to equal the centroid or center of mass, right? But what does density being uniform mean? This means that the mass will be uniform throughout the entire section. This also means that the area is gonna be directly proportional to the mass, right? This brings us to our last point where we talk about holes. Uh, we simply consider them as a negative weight for calculations simply because they're removing area or weight from our entire system, right? So let's go back to the problem and take a look at what we're dealing with. So now looking at this problem, the first step we can do is identify our shapes. So we talked earlier that we have this semicircle here, which is a hole, uh, and we have this quarter circle here. Uh, so first of all, I'll label this quarter circle as shape one, and then our semicircle as shape two. Moving uh, from left to right, we have this rectangular shape, uh, which will be number three. And then we have the triangular shape, which is number four. Let me just draw a line between. And then also we can identify, you know, the approximate locations for where those X tildes and Y tildes will be. So for a semicircle or a quarter circle, you have a location right about there. 
the semicircle would be somewhere around there. Your rectangle, you know where that is. It's gonna be one half these directions. And then another centroid is located right here for that triangle. All right, so I've went ahead and shaded this composite with some different colors now, just so we can represent the whole uh, visually differently. Uh, we have that red here just to show that when we get to it, we need to take some extra precautions with our signs because we're gonna be using subtraction uh, for things like area. We also have some formulas down here that are going to help us solve for tilde x, tilde y, and area for the quarter circle and the semicircle. All right, so we have these formulas up here. And we pretty much just need to solve for all of those components that we need for the formulas based on each separate shape. So the first shape we have is this quarter circle. And the first thing we need to do is solve for the area, which is 1 fourth pi r squared. And radius is 3 inches in this case. And when we solve that, we're going to be left with 7.069 inches squared. Moving on to x tilde, we are working from origin to the left, meaning that this x tilde is going to be negative. And we're going to be using this formula right here, 4r over 3 pi. 4, 3 inches over 3 pi gives us 1.273 inches negative. Next, we can take y tilde which is gonna be the same value, except now we're going from origin upwards, and that is representing our positive convention. Therefore, 1.273 inches is gonna be positive for our y tilde. Next, we move on to the semicircle. Uh, we have a very similar thing. We have 1 half pi times the radius of that circle, or the semicircle, which is one inch squared. And that's gonna give us, first of all, a negative value because we remember it's a whole. And it's going to give us an area of about 1.571 inches squared. Moving on to x tilde, we are not moving in the right direction or the left direction based on where the origin is. So that means that x tilde is actually going to be 0. However, our y tilde is going to be represented by 4r over 3 pi, uh, similar to the previous formula. So we have 4 times 1 inch over 3 pi which gives us a value of 0 0.424 inches. Next, we can move on to the third shape, which is our rectangle. And we have an easy area formula, which is just base times height. So three inches times six inches is gonna give us 18 inches squared. Moving on to x tilde, we're moving from the origin to the right, and it's gonna be half of six inches based on what we know before from uh, rectangular distributions. So we have one half of six, that is gonna give us three inches. And that's positive because we're going origin to the right. Similar for y, we're going origin up. So it's also positive. And we're taking half of three inches here, which means we're going to have 1.5 inches. And then lastly, we have our triangular shape. And we have a area of one half base times height, three inches by three inches. So three inches squared, which is going to give us 4.5 inches squared. Then we look at x tilde, which is kind of unique because we are moving from origin, skipping over the six inches and then going one extra inch because it's one third of three inches from this direction, right? So that means that x tilde is gonna be six inches plus one inch, which is equal to seven inches. Then y bar is gonna be simply one third of the height, three inches, which is also going to be one inch, all right? So now we have everything that we need to plug into our formulas. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged in our values for x bar and y bar formulas. Uh, we've done all the hard work already. Uh, the only thing that's different now is just explaining uh, what is happening. So we're pretty much just following what the formula is asking for. So it wants x tilde times area for each of the separate shapes, and it wants it all summed together. Okay, so that's what we did. For shape one, you can see we have x tilde times the area for the quarter circle. Same with the semicircle, the rectangle, and the triangle. And we did the same for y bar as well. And we used all of the values that we calculated previously. The only value that's different here is this area, which is the summation of all areas of this entire composite. So what we did was we took the area of one plus the area of two plus the area of three plus the area of four. The only note to make here is that we have a negative being added to that total area because we have a hole, right? So solving these two formulas, you are left with your final answers, 
which is going to be x bar equal to 2.73 inches. And that is going to be in this direction from origin to the right. And then for y bar, you have an answer of 1.42 inches. And that is going to be from origin upwards.